Good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm David Sweat, Deputy Director of the Shelby County Health Department. I'd like to welcome you to the City of Memphis and Shelby County Joint Task Force Briefing for the COVID response. <clears throat> In terms of our numbers today, we have, and I'm joined today by uh, local health officer, Dr. Bruce Randolph, who will be available to help answer questions as well. Our total number of cases reported in Shelby County is 83,235 cases uh, so far. That represents 206 new cases in the last 24 hours reported to the health department. We've had 1,289 deaths reported from this epidemic, and that includes nine new deaths reported yesterday. For overall testing, Shelby County residents have been tested 955,672 times, and 10% of those have <clears throat> returned positive, or 95,000 people have had positive test results. In the state of Tennessee, we're at 729,187 cases reported as of 2 o'clock on February the 1st. In the surrounding counties immediate um, around Shelby County, we've had 18,450 cases diagnosed and reported in DeSoto County, Mississippi. We've had 6,558 cases reported from Tipton County, Tennessee. 5,041 cases reported from Crittenden County, Arkansas, and 4,267 cases reported in Fayette County, Tennessee. Looking at some of the data about vaccinations, we can tell you that so far, as of February 2nd, <clears throat> or February 1st, I'm sorry, we had 62,477 total doses of uh, COVID-19 vaccine in Shelby County, meaning 47,200 people had received at least their first dose, and 15,277 people have been documented as having both doses or being fully vaccinated. We do have a couple of other um, pieces of, inf of information we want to share today. One relates to a new effort that we are using, some new technology that the Shelby County Health Department is using to reach out to people by text through their telephones to let them know of a positive test result. I believe we have a graphic about this. So it is self-reported contact tracing interviews, everyone who receives a positive test result and is reported to the health department with a phone number that we can use to send a text will receive a text from the health department telling them that they have tested positive for or someone that has given this uh, telephone number as a point of contact for someone who has tested positive for COVID-19 and asking that individual to follow a link that's sent by text so they can do their own contact tracing interview um, interactively through their smart device or telephone. And the, the reason for doing this is so we can reach more people more quickly with the information about the fact that they've tested positive to provide them their isolation orders and help them calculate how long do they have to remain in isolation. Also gives them an opportunity to interact with the survey on their phone, provide their exposure information, their symptom information, the contacts that need to be placed in quarantine, and not have to talk to someone uh, in a personal interview. Now, if people are sent the text link and they do not uh, respond to that link, we will still reach out to them by our contact tracing health investigators to we'll call them to uh, to do the interview over the phone <clears throat> but if they would rather go ahead and do the interview themselves then they're uh, absolutely free to do that and invited to do that to speed everything up at the end of the interview they will have the opportunity to download a copy of their isolation letter and release letter which many employers require in order for people to return to work we also have another piece of uh, information to share is that we have a we, we now have a highly suspicious case that may represent the first Shelby County diagnosis of a person with the highly transmissible strain B117 coming from the United Kingdom. I emphasize that this is a possible, it is not confirmed but it is under investigation today. 
and as we get more information uh, we will share it as a once it's confirmed if if it turns out that it is actually the highly transmissible uk variant that has to be sent to the tennessee department of health and possibly the centers for disease control before it will be confirmed but the investigation is underway today we received a notification about this from the lab late last night um, now the UK variant, if it turns out to be the UK variant in this case, it is more infectious, uh, considered to be about three times more infectious, but it is not considered to be more lethal. So what the uh, important things that people would need to do is to maintain all of the things that we've recommended throughout, wearing a mask, social distancing, hand washing, stay away from other people if you're ill, maintain your isolation or quarantine as appropriate whether you're a case or a contact to a case know your status and get tested if you're having any symptoms um, if we have any more information to share or as we get more information to share about that we will but we wanted to let you know that that investigation is underway and at this time i'd like to invite dr uh, bruce randolph to come to the podium and give his remarks Thank you, Mr. Sweat. Greetings, fellow citizens of Shelby County. I'm Dr. Bruce Randolph, the health officer. And I'd like to just uh, make a couple of comments. One is that if you look at our data, we see that uh, we've, we're making good progress. Things are decreasing. The new uh, cases are decreasing. Uh, the positivity rate, the number of active cases, even the transmission rate are decreasing. We're making good progress. We must stay the course and continue to do the things that we've been doing, especially in light of the news that we've just recently received that there's a highly suspicious case, has not been confirmed, but a highly suspicious case of the UK variant um, B117, um, and we're awaiting, as uh, Mr. Sweat uh, indicated, confirmation from the CDC and Department of Health. But nevertheless, if it's present or not, we still need to continue wearing the mask, maintaining social distancing, avoiding the crowds and gatherings, washing your hands, and uh, getting tested as well as getting vaccinated uh, when uh, the vaccine is available to you. These measures will be important whether the variant is present or not. We are, have made, we have made progress, good progress towards uh, mitigation of the transmission of this virus. So let's continue. Let's continue what we're doing. One of the things is that um, uh, related to this news about the variant is that the Shelby County Health Department's team, along with the uh, Joint Task Force clinical team, we have developed a plan of action in the event that we have uh, a case of the uh, variant virus. Uh, and we will activate that plan uh, accordingly, which centers around extensive case uh, uh, investigation, extensive contact tracing, and early notification to the health department immediately when there is a suspicious case. So more information will be provided as we learn more about this situation. But let's continue to uh, stay the course and remain steadfast. There are some questions that some may have about the health directive. When we issued the health directive, we indicated that we would uh, keep it in place for four weeks. We've made progress over the period of two weeks and we normally monitor things 
every two weeks and decide whether or not we should make changes in the health directive. It is our position and our uh, belief that we should continue the progress that we'll make and evaluate the data in another two weeks and then uh, implement whatever changes we will uh, bring about at that time uh, so that we can uh, ensure that we continue this downward trend that we are currently experiencing and it will give us time to see whether or not we indeed are dealing with the very, the, a, a variant uh, strain here in our county. So we'll, the health director will remain in place as it is for at least another two weeks and then we will uh, decide what changes uh, we should uh, make to it at that time. Now I'll just stop to here and entertain any questions that uh, you may have. Brad Broders, Local 24. Thanks everyone, good afternoon. This could go to either uh, Dr. Randolph or uh, David. Just uh, based on the amount you all have vaccinated to date, um, when does the Shelby County Health Department estimate that appointments can open up to those 70 and older, as well as those 65 and older who are healthy and the K through 12 teachers and childcare staff? Well, we uh, actually have in the audience, uh, Dr. Martin, who's the uh, chairperson over this whole vaccination campaign. And I'm gonna ask her to come and address that particular question because she is the one who would uh, respond to the changes. Good afternoon and I apologize. I didn't hear the, the full question. Would you mind please repeating? Sure, sure, Dr. Martin. Based on, you know, it's a fluid situation. More doses are coming in, obviously, this week. But what is the health department's current estimate on when appointments can open up to those 70 and older, the healthy 65 and older, and the K through 12 teachers and child care staff? Okay, thank you. I, I, thank you for repeating. Um, okay, so we think that, it, well, we, we feel pretty certain it will be later this month that it will definitely open up for the 70 plus. Um, that was a directive that came out, um, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, but as I read it, uh, the encouragement, well, for, for 50 counties, it would be an automatic uh, that the counties would open up to 70 and older. Uh, for Shelby County, which is a little bit different because you have to think about how dense our population is in Shelby County, it will take a little bit longer as we move through those phases. However, we do anticipate that we will, uh, um, we will open that up to 70 and older uh, very soon within the, within the month. Uh, you also asked about teachers. We also are in hopes that that uh, time that it will open up for teachers later in the month as well. We were anticipating that it would occur earlier, uh, but at this time it looks like it will be later in this month possibly the 1st of March. That's our, our hope is that will occur sooner rather than later. Thanks, Dr. Martin. As a follow up, uh, any uh, two part question, any latest with the location of the planned Frazier vaccine site, as well as um, after the briefing on Thursday, Walmart released the information about the pharmacies. Uh, do you have any specifics about um, the amount of doses that uh, will be provided here locally through the Walmart pharmacy program? I don't have um, I don't have uh, very detailed information related to uh, the doses that will be available through Walmart. I have been informed that they will, it will be available at the inner city Walmart Mart stores, however, and those individuals will not necessarily be referred to Walmart by the health department, which is what we had, that was our initial understanding, is that they would be individuals that maybe we had seen or that had contacted us, and we could refer them directly into appointments. As I, my understanding at this time is that Walmart will establish those appointments. We can refer or suggest that individuals uh, contact Walmart, but we won't have any direct ability to s establish that appointment for them, if that helps. As far as uh, the, your question re regarding Frazier community, um, there is, 
ex we're exploring that possibility. It's a very real possibility that that will occur. Uh, so there is exploration of the community as well as some other communities that are inner cities uh, uh, to identify the best location where uh, vaccine delivery activities can occur. So that is in progress. Uh, I can't tell you exactly when it will occur, but I don't see it taking very long. Hopefully we will have some definitive information within the next week or two. Dominique Dillon, Fox 13. Hi, uh, my question is about teachers, students returning back to school. Do you believe it's better that they return once the majority of teachers are able to get the vaccine? I'm going to, I'm going to bring up Dr. Randolph. Thank you. You know, the whole um, discussion about students, uh, coming back to in-person class settings and teachers, the ideal situation would be that teachers be vaccinated uh, prior to uh, students returning to the um, in-person uh, setting, primarily because there are several teachers who um, could be at risk if they happen to get infected and this would be an added level of protection even though there's been some studies to suggest that um, schools and students in-person um, settings within the school is not a major risk however there is a risk there of transmission. We know that some cases have occurred uh, among students, uh, teachers, uh, and therefore there's that risk of transmission. So um, our hope, our preference would be that they be vaccinated uh, prior to but that's not necessarily an absolute necessity. Do you have a follow-up? Um, as a follow-up, do you see their priority uh, moving up at all, or could they begin getting vaccinated sooner than the projected date? Well, the, the phases and who falls into them is determined by the Tennessee Department of Health. The state developed a vaccination plan that they subsequently passed on to us. And it is the state that determines uh, what phase that we enter into. A uh, classic example is uh, prior to notification from yesterday, uh, we were still doing phase 1A, phase 1 uh, A2 uh, and 75 and older and the state has subsequently um, mandated to a dis uh, certain degree that health departments now offer 70 plus and so at some point they will determine what phase you enter into as we progress as vaccine become more available and as we vaccinate more people. Hannah Gravenstein, MLK 50. Hi, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about VaxQ. I was just wondering um, how VaxQ is going, if it's been uh, used since the rollout, how many people are have been vaccinated through it? Do you have any? I'm going to let Dr. Martin address that issue. Thank you for that question. I won't, okay, so what I can say is this, that the program has been launched and we are being oriented, not everyone has been familiar, completely oriented to how to access and optimally use the program. Uh, however, it has been activated. Uh, I have not personally accessed it uh, yet. We've not had a need yet, but we are uh, now 
uh, becoming oriented to how to access the program in the event that there is a time when we have uh, doses of vaccine available to administer to the public. So I hope that that answers your question. Is there a follow-up question? Nope, that's all, thank you. Thank you. Jane Roberts, Daily Memphian. Uh, can you give us some help with how long the investigations on this possible variant would be? I mean, what, what needs to happen and when do you think we will know? Uh, and how, why is it suspicious? What, what does it look like? Right. So um, in terms of what's going on right now is, is the medical records are being reviewed, patients being interviewed, things like that. But in order for us to get confirmation that it is in fact a B117, that will have to come from the Centers for Disease Control. So what we're working on today, in addition to the conversations with patient, is to move that isolate up to Nashville and possibly on to CDC for the viral sequence confirmation uh, from virologists in a public health laboratory to say, yes, in fact it is, or no, that's not a B117. What our local labs and the UT Health Science Center see is that this one looks like it has the genetic markers that make it look like it may be. And so that isolate is being uh, elevated to further investigation by the other uh, public health laboratories. So in, in terms of what has to happen in order for us to know for sure it is, we've got to get word back from those other laboratories saying, yes, it is. Um, but what we're doing right now is to get all the information in our investigation around this, uh, this patient so that if we find out indeed it is, uh, we've already got that in, all the information that we need to understand what we need to do next. Uh, may I ask one more question, David? Can you talk a little bit about the Coliseum and why that does not seem to be a good option right now? Actually, that is uh, really, a Dr. Martin question again about the vaccine campaign, but we are aware that the Mid-South Coliseum has been proposed as a potential site. Um, I'll let her comment on where they are with evaluating the site proposal. Thank you, Mr. Sweat. Um, yes, the Mid-South Coliseum is a, is a great location in terms of its uh, centrality in the city of Memphis. There are some concerns uh, related to using that as a primary site. And one of the primary ones has to do with uh, the restoration that would be required in order to use that site. I will say though, uh, that as that is being considered, we are moving forward with identifying a large number of, of uh, sites that are located throughout the city that are located in inner city communities that can make for improved access. Because you remember, we're thinking about equity and access. So we've got to be focused on locations that are going to be accessible to the people that live in Shelby County. So we're really focused in on identifying locations that are throughout the county. So I hope that, I hope that addresses your question. Uh, I'm not saying that the Coliseum is off the table. I'm saying that I know that there is uh, some discussion about it. And I know though that a good deal of uh, renovation or restoration would be required in order for us to be able to operate at that setting. Katie Reardon, WKNO. Hi, this question is for David. Um, I'm wondering, the viral sequencing that's been going on, has that been for every sample or has that been randomized? Um, and so was this found, was this, or this potential case found through randomized viral sequencing? Um, it, so there's a, a variety of things that are going on. There is a random sample of isolates or, or, or test samples from the local labs that are being sent to UT Health Science Center for them to examine. So there is a, a number of isolates, about 100 every week, that are randomly chosen and sent over for sequencing. And then there is a machine that some of the laboratories are using called a um, Thermo Fisher um, PCR machine that can detect suspicious markers in the samples that are run on it. And any sample that goes through that machine as they're running it, if it looks somewhat unusual, those are also, in addition to the random sample, they're being sent over for sequencing. 
and you know it's we're limited a little bit by the amount of um, specimens that can go through the Thermo Fisher machine and, and also the number of random samples UT can handle. So it, certainly it's a sample of what's going on in the testing program that's getting the sequencing. It's not the full range, but um, yeah, I mean, one of the samples that was sent over for sequencing came back as highly suspicious, and that's the one that we're pursuing right now. Great, thanks. And then also, um, as you guys talk about sort of um, uh, more robust contact tracing or, or your efforts to s contain this, I mean, how does that fit in with the new system? Is it, um, uh, do you, would somebody who, uh, who has a suspicious uh, case, would you want them to be contacted via text or is that, is the health right. department going to be taking that on? No, we, we prioritize those. We've had it, we have a team that's been assembled within the contact tracing team of some of our most um, successful and experienced investigators. They're the ones who will be detailed to pursue these uh, suspicious variants. And there have been others that have had some level of suspicion that we've pursued, but they didn't, you know, they, they panned out, they, they turned out to be normal sequences. Um, so, so that's, you know, it's, it's something that we definitely send to a team for for special handling, I guess is the best way to call it. But uh, but the effort, the text campaign effort or the text effort is an effort to make sure that everyone that has a positive test receives a notification and tells them for sure, you tested positive. And the reason we wanna bring this up is that if someone has recently tested and they get this text alert, we want them to understand this is legit. It's not a, uh, it's not a scam, right? It's 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 legit. The health department is actually sending you a text and telling you that you've tested positive and inviting you to do the survey. And then, um, but what we're hopeful of is that that will help people receive the the maximum number of people possible receive the notification of their positive tests as soon as possible, and give them the opportunity to download their isolation orders and do their own interactive case investigations so that we can uh, triage basically and focus the energies of the health investigators on folks who either can't be reached by a smart device or uh, would prefer to, to talk to somebody instead of do it through their phone. Kelly Roberts, WMC. Good afternoon. Um, first, since we, we were just talking about that variant um, that is uh, being tested at this point, um, can you guys hammer home again, just staying the course? And, you know, with these vaccines, it, when people hear about new variants, I mean, are you guys still recommending that the vaccines are, you know, one of the, you know, first lines of defense, um, even with the new variants? First line of defense is the mask, right? And social distancing and hand washing. It's the normal things that we've been emphasizing all along. That's your first line of defense. And then, yeah, certainly the vaccine, as enough people are vaccinated, then yes, that becomes primary prevention. You're preventing the infection in the first place, or at least the disease through the vaccine. But we are only right now at a little above 7% of our goal uh, we need to vaccinate 656,600 people in Shelby County in order to reach that, um, that target goal of 70% of the population is vaccinated. And toward that goal, we're only a little over 7% of the way right now. So uh, that, that gets back to staying the course, right? The hand washing, social distancing, avoid large gatherings, wear a mask every time that you're out in public or around others. Um, don't go to work if you're sick. If you've been placed in an isolation order, adhere to it. Stay home for the period of time that you're infectious and avoid contact with other people even in your home. And then if you've been identified as a contact, uh, somebody who's in quarantine, to go ahead and quarantine for the period of time that you're directed to do so. And all of those things together can help us whether the virus that we're dealing with is the strain that we've been fighting since last March, or it's a newly emergent strain. 
all of those measures are still protective and, and the ones that we need to adhere to uh, to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and help the community um, avoid overwhelming the hospitals and overwhelming our workplaces and our social networks with disease. And finally, um, you know, you mentioned the 7%. So 7% in, you know, six or so, or a little bit more um, weeks of our goal, it, is that the right pace? You know, my question kind of stems from, you know, the county having to wait to open up to 70 and older. Um, you know, we have been with the 75 plus and older and in the 1A and 1B phases um, for a little while now. Are we still on track to, they reach those kind of 12 months that it will take to to vaccinate the 650,000 people or are we a little behind is 7% kind of um, right on track at this point? Well, um, that's a great question and thank you for it. Um, right now, the vaccine allocation to Shelby County or at least over the past several weeks has been less than 10,000 doses, right, per week. But that is increasing. Also, the channels are increasing. So in addition to the health department and the, and the healthcare systems, the hospitals, we're now getting pharmacies, places like Walmart, we're getting some other um, of the safety net uh, healthcare providers are beginning to be able to be allocated vaccine. So we're multiplying sites where we're developing, uh, delivering vaccine, we're multiplying providers, and the state has increased our allocation. So all of those things together would speed up the, uh, the, the distribution of vaccine in our community. Uh, but right now, Dr. Martin has nodded to me, yes, we are on pace. We are out of time. Are there any closing messages today? Um, I would just say, if you have the opportunity and it's your phase, please do seek out and obtain the vaccine. All of us need to continue to wear the mask all of us need to continue to practice social distancing, hand washing, and all the measures that we've been preaching all the way back to last March. They're still the effective ones. And we appreciate everybody's cooperation for all the hard work because the numbers are improving. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.